yo guys welcome back to another video this is going to be the op07 vegapunk video gonna do some uh deck guide with some gameplay at the end this is a video i've been really excited and really looking forward to making i played vegapunk quite a bit in op07 but i've been playing him a lot here in op08 too and i've kind of like retroactively gone back and tweaked some lists that i liked back in op07 that i was using and just wanted to show you guys and kind of like give you some insights um, obviously, you know, I like go over the decks, show you the, the mulligans and the key cards and all that stuff, and then I have some gameplay at the end. It's going to be um, videos that I recorded offline, and I'm going to be doing the commentating over them. Let me know if you like it that way or if you like it better when I'm just live doing the videos that way. I wanted to try this just to see how it goes, but um, yeah, uh, it's a really fun leader. I'm super excited to do this, so let's just jump in and let's get started. All right, so... Vegapunk leader, very special leader. There is no, there is no leader like him. Um, he's another leader that can attack, and if you haven't noticed before, he has two life, and his effect is activate main once per turn for one dawn. Place up to one cost five or less uh, card with the egghead type from your hand face up on top of your life or into play. Our list here is a list that I've tweaked kind of after playing a lot of the op08 vegapunk and uh, a list especially inspired by ka a uh, japanese player over here you might remember him as the giga chad who won with rebecca back in op04 now he is the giga, the giga chad that uh, just got top 32 at the wave one cs finals and will be going to the japanese like the japan nationals tournament um, he also got top sorry top four top eight or top four at the last cs with it i think miyagi cs um crazy crazy this dude is amazing um definitely showcase the strength uh there's a few giga chads out there who have been kind of like winning a, a couple flagships here and there but uh taking vegapunk all the way to top four of a cs is kind of insane and he's a really really good player and um uh, he's kind of inspired, like myself included, a bunch of people who either played Vegapunk a little bit or, um, you know, to pick up the leader, who didn't play Vegapunk to pick up the leader and try it. I will just say here at the start that Vegapunk is extremely hard. It's an extremely hard deck to pilot. Um, but when you win with him, it's very rewarding. So if that's the type of deck that you like, it's it's like Rebecca, honestly. It does remind me a lot of Rebecca. I wasn't a big Rebecca player. I'm a big Rebecca fan. Wasn't a big Rebecca player just because the, I don't know, something about it didn't really click with me. But I love Egghead. I love a lot of yellow cards. Obviously, you get to play nine cost Yamato in this deck, so I'm there for it. Um, but it's hard, man. I'm not going to lie. This deck is really, really hard. And if you're not careful, like this it's uh it's it's like if you want to if you want to play a deck that's kind of like a nail but you don't want to just rely on like not knowing what your triggers are and hitting it out of life and you want to have a little bit more control over your own fate i think this is a really good deck um it's it's just hard because you can you can make such a minuscule misplay uh, that like turn two of like uh, you put a robin or like you, you put a luffy onto your board instead of your life and literally five turns later that's why you lost the game so um while it is a very like high reward deck it's also very punishing and if you don't have patience and if you don't put in just like hundreds if not thousands of reps with it you're probably not going to be able to perform super well with it and i'm not speaking like i'm some kind of like vegapunk master here i'm definitely not but i have used it a lot um, especially in the past couple of weeks and i do think i'm finally starting to get a grip of the leader like if that puts it into perspective for you the other thing just here at the top that i want to mention is this is a deck that's going to go to time a lot you have to play very quickly um you'll even notice in some of the games that i'm going to show you guys like i'm making my turn plays in like 15 to 30 seconds and because your opponent is probably either like some, you're gonna this is one of those decks where it's like oh vegapunk i've never played against vegapunk and it's like funny and charming at first but then when they're like sitting there for like five minutes trying to decide on what they should do um you need to map out your turns and your moves ahead of time and kind of just try and know either exactly what you're gonna do or like okay if things change then i need to know like exactly what to adjust to try and like you know compensate for this or that right um those are just the main things i would want to say up at the front but uh with that out of the way let's just go over the deck here all right so obviously 
the main core is all the egghead cards um, with a few kind of tech choices that you have. The one thing I will say is four Yamato, four nine cost Yamato. There is no discussion. The only discussion would be like if you're running a, a kind of like a more like one of the rush aggro versions of the deck where you can run like five cost ace, four cost Katakuri. You can run the egghead stage so that you're just like restanding your uh, car. You have like Atlas on the field and you get like the like you have a Pythagoras and Atlas or like a Shaka. So you're swinging with like Atlas and Shaka. You're restanding Shaka at the end of your turn. You're always at like one or two life. Um, there are different variations of the build and I personally played a egghead stage build for most of OP07 and it's really 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 fun but I do think you just find more consistency with the um the more like the I, I consider this build to be a little bit it's it's close closer to the starving build where you're just like KOing the characters and dealing with their board as they come from your opponent and setting up a few Yamatos or Katakuris and then just going for game all at once. It's very similar to like a Star Vanel build, but you do have the option to do a little bit of like a mid, mid kind of aggro switch that you can always turn on for matchups like Luchi or Moria or um, if you see your opponents bricking and you know you have like a, uh, a small window that you can kind of just like aggro them and like take advantage of what's going on. Um, you can always do that, but uh, let's just go over here. We got two Flampes. Um, I like running this at four in OP08, but I feel like just to make room for some of the other cards, she's just there at two right now. This card is really, really good to activate, like to take the life down. If, you, if you're stacking life and your opponent switch, like if your opponent's attacking you and you're building up your life and then they switch to starving you or just not attacking you, um, and you're at three life and you want to play a Luffy to KO your opponent's board, playing a Flampe, getting the life and drawing from it is really, really strong because one of the things Vegapunk struggles with is resources. So getting something like a Flampe and then having the uh, two or less life to play the Luffy or you're at two life and you want to play Yamato, this is classic NL trick, right? This is why NL runs four Flampes. Um, you know, you can use a uh, Yamato to heal so you get like the life, the extra card draw, and then you also healed, which is just technically another card you're going to draw or get onto your field the next turn. Uh, Flampe is really, really good. I would honestly just consider even maybe just taking Frankie down to two and putting her at four, even in this build. Um, but just for now, she's at two. Four Katakuris. I know this card is expensive. It does get way cheaper once the, uh, the best of PRB set comes out, but I know that's not an option for everyone in the West right now. I just think, especially in OPO7, you need four Katakuris because you got Acos Kids, you got Moria, Moria's, you got Eshows, you got like Hody Jones, you got so many things that you need to worry about coming at you and if you're just able to bottom deck them. The other thing too is this card is kind of essential for Black Yellow Luffy because you put their five cost Luffy's, not the Egghead one, just the, uh, the, the Trash of Life and Draw a Card Luffy onto the top of their life so th and then try and attack them so that it goes to the bottom. Um, this card is really essential in a lot of matchups and I think it's important that you run it at four. Like I was saying, if you're running this type of build for um, Vegapunk, four Yamato. Just four Yamato. There's no questions. This is the best card in the deck. It's the key card. It's the card that you kind of need one to two of for like 90% of your matchups. Otherwise, you have a, a high chance of losing. Um, it's just too good. You want to go second in most of your matchups. So what you do on your 10 on turn is you're trying to balance things so you're at one life. By the time you're at 10 on, you play Yamato, heal the two, use leader effect to put another card into life. Um, literally anything doesn't really matter. Um, whatever suits your situation best. And then you just went from one to three life and you got a nine cost 9k body on the board and you probably KO'd at least a three, two, six, seven cost character from your opponent. It's just too good. You have to run four cost Yamato, or four of the nine cost Yamatos. Gidatsu is definitely more of a tech that's in OP07. He still sees some play in OP08, but um, really until we get the egghead, the five cost egghead Nami, Gidatsu is filling the space. That's actually what this Thunderbird is for. Um, it's kind of like filling the void, um, but I've actually really started to enjoy this card a lot in my OP07 testing, and I'm considering just running this in my OP08 builds as well. But um, yeah, he's just a really good card. 
to it's it's like if if you're an NL player or if you've played an L or if you've played against enough NLs, you kind of can see like what's going on here is you're trying to control your opponent's board by KOing and like you know setting up your own bodies or setting up your life um, gaining resources that way until you can play your own big bodies to control the board that way and then you kind of just go in for the last like one or two turns where you're doing really big heavy swings with a bunch of characters trying to just beat your opponent that way atlas is a tech that i really like in op07 more than op08 but she's still really good because the thing is is sometimes against five life leaders you kind of don't mind getting them down to four like doflamingo um you know he's either running four cost like a ton of four cost right there is six cost boa hancock but even if you get them down to four you're normally able to like finagle things enough to like make it so that you're at two and they're at four um and you know not as many it's not always a guarantee that they're even running the six cost and then there's like 10 cost kaido which you don't even need to worry about you're not gonna be worrying about getting your life totals to that much so having some a card like atlas because at the start you're always going to be lower than your opponent right just having a card that like oh i can i can swing at leader or i can swing at their character and if they can't ko this card with an effect um it's sticking it's sticking on the board another thing this is a great skill check card because people will swing into this card i think in my uh the boa match that i have for the gameplay you're gonna see them um, make a misplay and swing in one time it doesn't really matter that much but it's just like you'll catch people off guard and it's kind of like a nice little safety net to have just knowing like they have to bottom deck or ko this like with effects if you're at less life than your opponent the one thing to note is if you are it's only if you're less life so if you're at the same life total as your opponent they can ko it so just be careful um you need to be the one who's aware of that because if your opponent isn't um like you can you know uh that's how you get a judge called or something is if like one of you notices late or if you're not paying attention um they can sneak one up on you too being like oh actually we're the same so it does get ko'd when you might just be like okay that's fine and then it's like oh wait actually it gets ko'd so just be careful edison uh this is a four of atlas i think you can atlas is a little bit of a tech spot um pythagoras is an, a good alternative that i like running for black because Pythagoras' effect is if you're two or, two or less life when this character is KO'd, you can play a four cost or less egghead card from your trash rested. Basically, just call back like a Lilith or get a Frankie, or if you really need to, like just throw a Robin on the board just to have another body. Edison, I think, is uh, really needs to be run at two or a four because it's just a good 2k counter. And this is how you cycle when you don't see your top end and you really need it um this is a great card to play like you so you'll be in situations where you're just going to play this from your hand just because you need the the two card cycle um and then obviously putting it into your life can be pretty strong too because you do get to play it on the board and the effect is just on play shaka that's a four of it's a blocker amazing with the please save me event the combo the synergy is just too good um robin so if you're running the more like star versions i think for robin is kind of a must this card is actually just so freaking good um it's normally one of the cards that you're like kind of mulliganing for um lilith and uh if you run the search event lilith and robin are really 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 good starting hand cards um you'll see kind of in the games too what you what you kind of like to do is um you throw robin on the top of your life uh going first uh sorry turn one going second and then turn two going second you have four dawn and you can like play lilith or say say you're playing against like a blue dofi sometimes a nice play is like you you throw down a luffy onto the board right and then turn two you throw down a lilith search whatever else you need and put robin into your life that's three and then the one dawn for leader effect it's just a really nice combo like early game setup thing if you're just drawing into a bunch of cards that don't actually get you the additional resources or draw or search um it's really hard to kind of like set up for what you're going to need for like the early to mid game and even if you have your bigger bodies it's uh tough and you can just end up losing um so yeah i think robin is kind of kind of essential um i have four frankies in here he's just you know good 2k but like i said he's not like the most vital card in this deck 
Um, I would even consider just running him at two to have Flam pay at four, or like a three-three split is fine. That's kind of up to you. Um, it's good to put him into life every now and then because you're getting a 5k body on board and if you're at the the one or less when you play him you get the draw five cost luffy rocket luffy egghead luffy one of the best cards in the deck um i think you all know this card from anel and black hill luffy uh this is a four of this is kind of one of the cards that just makes your the vegapunk deck viable you know he's gonna be KOing, and the the real thing too is like like the real important thing here is you're getting the card draw the card draw is so important most of the time i don't know how many times i've just been like all right i have a luffy on board uh i got a three cost blocker i want to pop i'm gonna attack pop and then boom you draw like the yamato or something you need and you're just like oh my god thank you luffy um so he's a four of he's a must four of for me lilith this is one of the other huge crux cards of the deck um four of just amazing throw this in life it's a 5k it's amazing you'll get the search um also like a decent card to put back with katakuri because we don't have five cost egghead nami yet um not much to say about that three rigos um you can run this between two and four honestly um this is such a good card when you're running the kind of starve deck and you're going to be coming across like 10 cost kaidos eight cost kids um obviously against a nell this card is super crucial getting rid of yamato's and 10 cost aces um and the trigger is just really good too because most of the time when you're starving your opponent's at four to five life you know and if you're at one to two um you're gonna be KOing like between a four to six k character if you get this out of life um so which is really nice and then here's here's some of the spice this is some of the spice here so 30 million volt thunderbird i think is really really good because um, and it's only good if you're doing the starve tactic, right? If you're not doing the starve tactic or if you're someone who's like more of even just like the mid-range style of the deck, even if you're running all the top end still, don't play this card if you're doing that. Play this card if you want to pop, you know, if you like, it's great against red purple law. It's great against blue dofi. Um, it's good against like Bonnie and certain other decks just in the early game where uh like even luchi a little bit if they're playing their four cost luchis and you just need to get them off the board or they put three spandoms on board and you're like okay if he if he's you know just start swinging five and six k leader and spandom every turn i'm gonna have trouble like it's very very useful obviously hitting a trigger is pretty nice um yes it is one more uh non-egghead card but i do think it's really good i do want to say um one thing this search card is really really good and i've been running this search card basically three to four of this in place of this in my op08 deck and this is what ka also runs and a lot of people run the search i don't think it's a must um like that you have to but if you don't really value this card as much or if you don't see as many red purple laws or you don't see a lot of dofies in your meta then go ahead and run this card or you know run four rigo for this and like two search or something like that um you can decide the ratios um and then i like three to four of the please save me events the one cost event this card is just really really good you um you always have it as like a, a defensive card but you're actually playing this into life more often than not because um one of the nice things is like if you have a shotgun on board you block he gets ko'd he goes to trash and your and your life is this you can just bring shaka back or you bring back an egghead luffy like it's it's so strong you can lily uh lilith luffy uh i mean like even uh atlas is good edison is a great target shaka is obviously probably the best target out of all of them uh it's just really really good um so that's the main deck right there I'll quickly just go over some other options that are like obviously some of these are op8 cards um zoro's not worth it in my opinion york's not really worth it um usopp if you need the extra 2k is like pretty good the trigger is decent but i still just like you you have to really kind of like focus on what you're trying to do with the deck and stick to that in my opinion pythagoras is the other one that i do kind of like out of all these op07 cards uh, the one that I do end up running sometimes is Pythagoras, just because it's really good against Black. Um, not as good against like Law and Dofi, obviously, so that's why I kind of prefer Atlas at the moment, just because I find more of those like niche situations where Atlas is more powerful. Uh, Vigaforce 1 is nice that it's a 4 cost 6k, but 
um you know if you're running pythagoras this is obviously a good card for that but at the end of the day i think that just that combo ends up slowing you down more than it helps you and then the other card i do want to talk about is the egghead stage i love 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 this card i am still i'm still an egghead stage stan i still believe in this card um it's so strong like dude if you if you you play out a Lilith, because with the stage, you can go first as well. It's really strong. You go first, you like play out a Lilith, and then turn two, you're at three dawn. Um, you play stage and like an Atlas, and then turn three, you're swinging in like uh, Atlas, Lilith, maybe playing a, a Luffy or another card, and you're restanding the Lilith, and you're probably at less life than them still, so Atlas can't be KO'd. Um, the only thing is, you become a little bit dependent on this card if you build your deck around it obviously and uh i don't love being dependent on seeing this because if you run for this it makes it hard for you to run um other events like raigo that you really need because you kind of need to run please save me if you're running egghead stage so then uh, it just becomes a little bit trickier to kind of balance things and then you're kind of like getting stuck in the middle of like am i a mid aggro deck am i playing the star game etc blah 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 um, but that's it. I really like this card. I'm still working on some other builds that I might be able to showcase. Maybe I'll just do a, 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 like a little one-off video showing a build that I make with the stage. If you have a, a stage build deck list that you want to share, please feel free to because I love seeing those. Um, but that's it. That's it for the deck list. Sorry if that went a little too much into detail. I wanted to explain everything thoroughly since there's not much resources and not much info on Vegapunk. Um, but I think he's an underrated leader and I wanted to kind of share my insights as much as I could. And uh, let's jump into the hands mulligans key cards before we go into the gameplay. Okay, real quick, before we jump into the hands and mulligans, I did want to mention two other tech cards that I really, really like are Ten cost ace, just because while the ten dawn for ace is really expensive, and obviously you can't play him and use leader effect, there are some games that your opponent is just going to be kind of like stalling you, and you don't have a flampe, you don't have a way of like kind of getting your life down, and you feel kind of like dead in the water just by playing your big bodies, and you know that like oh, if I swing with Katakuri now or swing with Yamato now, like my opponent is just going to like. Uh, swing over them and get rid of them and then I'm gonna be you know I won't have a way to go for a game the next turn etc kind of like that in those situations 10 cost ace is really really strong um, I mean even if you're just at one life and you know you can like clear board with the other characters you have on on your board and they won't be expecting it uh, 10 cost ace comes down you get you get a life you go up to two and you clear whatever threat they have um, and you know you have enough counter in your hand uh, to survive like there's just so many situations where While it may not be as practical as like obviously Yamato with leader effect. It's still really strong Seven cost Linlin -Lin is another really strong card here um, It's just like it's kind of hard to find the timing to play her sometimes where uh, Even if you do have the kind of resources and the life and you feel comfortable enough to play here a lot of the times your opponent is just going to trash one of their lives and when you're doing kind of like a starve tactic it kind of ends up hurting you in the end anyways because it's like you don't really want them to always trash your life uh, at your like seven or eight on turn because that's right before you would be getting the maximum value with it with yamato anyways but it is very strong into certain matchups like kind of like black um, if you're already rushing them down a little bit, it's nice. Um, can't even be strong in Red Purple Law because they don't get the, um, you know, 8,000 power is kind of hard for them to deal with. But if you do choose, so, like, I really like running uh, two 10 cost aces in my OP08 builds right now. And it would look something a lot more similar like this, where I just, instead of the three Thunderbirds, I added in two aces and one of the Please Save Me. So if you wanted to see, like, kind of a different variation of the deck, this is it and i've already talked about like a lot of the other cards you can kind of like switch and the ratios that you can change so feel free to just test and see what you like um like you could run godatsu at two you could run him at four um you could i wouldn't run ace more than two or three i don't think you need him at four i just don't think it's worth it um you're gonna be drawing too many counter lists and it's good you can't always play ace that's the problem so having him at two or even three is kind of nice but uh yeah i just wanted to show you guys one other option if you uh just want to kind of solidify things make it a little bit more um consistent and just have that extra option with ace or linlin -Lin. 
All right, so these are going to be the hands, uh, the cards that you're going to be mulliganing for, the key cards of the deck that you want to see for most matchups. I will say the first and foremost, if you're running the search uh, event, that's another one that you can kind of add in here because if you go second, just having the extra dawn um, to use this, that's also why Thunderbird is also really strong. Uh, just having, because a lot of the time you're using leader effect and for... Uh, you know a few turns out of your game You're gonna be just using leader effect and you may not have the four five six dawn that you need to play like all these other cards So having the the little like one dawn cards or the two dawn cards is uh, really important uh, To fill the gap and like get the most value. That's why Lilith is so freaking good is because she's only a three cost so basically you you want your hand like if i had to just tell you like for the search and setup side of things it's these three cards robin luffy and uh lilith because with lilith you can and like honestly shaka's kind of in here too with lilith you can search out whatever of these three most important egghead cards that you really need so it's probably going to be shaka robin or luffy just depending on your matchup and um, having robin already in hand is huge because what you can do Say you have a Luffy or something, or you're just you're just goaded and you have like two Lilis in hand or something, right? Um, you can always put Robin as your first life. Like against Red Purple Law, you kind of need to just like start sacking your life and getting resources as quickly as possible, especially if you find that they're gonna try and rush you down. So just throwing a Robin into life and then having, uh, let's just say, let's say you have these three cards. Turn one, you're going second. You throw a Robin into life and pass. Um, maybe they hit you, maybe they don't, doesn't really matter at that point. Turn two, um, you might just play a Luffy on the field to swing and pop something for the following turn. Um, like play Lilith for three, and then you still have one Dawn left. You can either put X Egghead card onto your life, or um, play a card out onto the field. Like Luffy or Atlas is always a really good card to just throw onto the board. But because you know, like unless they can just KO it straight away, like it's going to get you some value. Um, so that's essentially what you're trying to do, right? Like setting up and getting the resources and cards that you need for the first like two to four turns is so important because what you're also doing with cards like Robin and Edison is you're getting card draw and you're cycling because what you need is this card. You need Yamato, nine cost Yamato for like so many matchups. If you can draw two nine cost Yamatos for Red Purple Law, you can win. Like, it's just that simple. If you play smart and they don't just high roll you like crazy, um, if they, it, here's the thing, like this is what I've learned in my in my studies over the past couple weeks. Even in OPO8, if Law only draws one to two Reju's, one to two kids and like one to two queens and doesn't have more than one to two kid and killers, which like is not asking for too much. That's already like kind of high rolling it and like to, to a certain extent, right? As long as they don't go past that, as long as they don't see their third or fourth raise you as, and you are seeing a decent amount of cards that you need for the early game and you have one or two Yamatos, you can win the game. That's it's just that simple. Um, same for Dofi, as long as they're not seeing like three gym bays in a row and getting a weevil off of it every time, like you have the tools. That's what's so fun and so cool about Vegapunk is you have the tools to do it, right? Um, so Yamato for like just the the top end uh, end game for most of your matchups. Like I said before, Katakuri is for your eight cost kids, for your Moria's, for your E shows, and especially for the um, Black Yellow Luffy matchup. Black Yellow Luffy, in my opinion, is like Katakuri, Yamato, and Shaka are the the real MVPs of that match. Um, and then for like something like Anel, you're gonna want Raigo, you're gonna want Katakuri, you're gonna want Yamato, you're gonna want your own top end. Um, for something like Red Purple Law, it's Egghead Luffy. It's like Lilith, Egghead Luffy, Gidatsu, and Yamato. Shaka is just always really strong, right? So you wanna keep that in mind. Uh, Luchi, Luchi is a little bit tricky. You kind of have to pressure them down. Like you can try and play it slow, but it's it's very risky that way. But for Luchi, um, maybe just like having some Liliths or Atlas is really strong, um, just because they're gonna have to like end up using some of their KO power on uh, Atlas when they would want maybe rather want to spend it on like a Gadatsu or a Shocker or something. Um, it just puts them in a tricky situation. And uh, I'm trying to think of any other like super important matchups for OPO7, but it's like Luchi, Luffy, Law, 
Anel, Bonnie, and then everything else is kind of just like, you know, like I said, like the generic, these are the cards that you want to see. Um, but yeah, if you had to mulligan for something in most matchups, I would just say it's like, try and get one of your top end cards. And then you really, 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 even if you don't have like Egghead Luffy, if you have a Robin and a Lilith, you keep, you keep, you just do. Um, but obviously you don't always get so lucky, but the nice thing is, is you normally have like at least one way to search for the other thing. Even if you have no Robins or Liliths, if you have an Edison, boom, you just play Edison. And then as soon as you get one to two pieces of the combo that you need, you can then it's like kind of snowball effects and you can get to where you need to go. Um, but just pray, just pray you draw those Yamatos, man. Cause I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's really important. Um, and for most matchups, I would say you want to go second. There are certain situations where you're trying to pressure them down, um, like maybe against Moria or Lucci, you could try and pick first. But for OPO7, I still think most matchups you want to go second. Um, I like going second against Red Purple Law. I like going second against Dofi. I like going second um, against just almost every other, every matchup, just because just having the 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 most of your cards you're playing are odd curve, right? Um, except for Acos Katakuri, so. Um, yeah, like being able to play something for five and then still have the, the Dawn for leader effect or play something for three and still have the Dawn for leader effect is really, really strong. Um, so yeah, that's it. Those are the hands and mulligans and the key cards. So let's jump into the gameplay. All right, this first match was against Red Purple Law. So I'm just going to kind of like commentate over it uh, the best I can. I actually had two games with him here um, because after the first one ended, he wanted a rematch. So um, I'll just kind of like talk about everything the best I can. You can see here, pretty good hand. This is like pretty ideal. Like when I showed you in the, the mulligans and stuff, this is what you want to see. Like I have a Yamato, I have a Robin, I have a Lilith. I got the second Lilith, I got the second Yamato. Like if you see this, you're, you're, you know you're pretty good. And I even get the, the Egghead Luffy off of the Lilith search. Um, you might notice here too, like I'm trying to play as quickly as I can. You have to play pretty fast. The Red Purple Law match never takes too long. Even at its longest, is about 15 minutes or so, but, um, so I'm setting up my life. Uh, the worst thing you can do is like underestimate a, uh, rush deck, like, uh, like a deck that can do aggro like Red Purple Law and take the life like not heal yourself early and like go down to two they just play out a kitten killer and you're down to one or zero on like turn two or three can or like turn three or four can be very dangerous and the thing here too is like don't be afraid to uh, like either play down a luffy and not use it or to play it and just use it get rid of it right there i think you can even see here i might have miscounted my life i might have been trying to use that luffy to pop that shot pen but um realized i was at three which is like my bad um i don't remember if i did that on purpose because sometimes you you can use luffy as bait but i do think against red purple law um it's probably better to just pop like especially like blue doflamingo too I, i'll just you know throw luffy on the field to pop their um character and it's really really strong with thunderbird because you can just get rid of two four cost bodies for um essentially three dawn because if you're using your leader effect um, so he gets rid of Luffy here and bottom decks it, which sucks because then I can't get him back with the one cost event. So that's something to keep out, keep an eye out for. Um, I honestly don't remember if if that was a genuine misplay for me, but I would say it would probably would have been better not to do that. Um, oh, here you go. This is this is nice. This is a good trigger to get right there. Um, but I'm still feeling pretty good. Uh, they only have two cards. Like we haven't seen them play a Raju yet, which is huge for us. So while I have zero life, I'm thinking like, okay, all right, what can I do here? I have a Dawn, but I don't know if playing Katakuri is the right call. I can play Shaka um, and then put the uh, Please Save Me into to life. But I don't think I have a Shaka in the trash yet. So I'm just testing the waters. Um, him not blocking there and then letting both of these go is really huge so i'm like okay i'm just gonna play shaka and i believe i put another shaka into my life yeah because this way it's like he can't get rid of both of them right <laughs> he can get rid of one of them if he has a gordon rays max but he can't get rid of both of them um essentially in the same term if it comes out of uh life so uh i know i'm good here i know i'm good i have a little bit of counter and I have, why? Well, I mean, I have a 2K and I have the one cost event that is live because it's two or less life. That's another thing, don't forget. 
Um, as much as much as I practice with uh, Vegapunk, I will I will forget sometimes that the Egghead Luffy is two or less. Um, you know, or like you're just not paying close enough attention sometimes is really dangerous. But here I figure like, okay, I can take this. And seeing him swing nine here, I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. Um, that means I'm probably gonna survive this turn. I'm thinking about what he can do. He can play Kid and Killer and swing nine with the two extra Dawn, but then I just end up blocking twice, right? Um, and I think, yep, wouldn't you know it? That's what he does. Oh yeah, and he gets the extra Dawn with Kid, so you gotta be careful for that too. Um, so swinging 10 and I realize like, oh, I can swing, I can block for six, go up to eight and then get to 11 with the one cost event. But then I'll have zero counter in hand and I'm thinking uh, it's probably not worth it. So I just let it go. And now I have two shakas in trash uh, and I have the one cost event in my hand and he's got two cards. And since he wasn't able to counter out before, I figure that uh, he's probably not going to be able to this time. Because I knew I could KO the uh, Kid and Killer with the... And honestly, I could have left that second Lilith up and just KO'd it with Yamato. So you could consider that like kind of a, a slight misplay as well. But at this point, he can't KO it anyways by through battle. He has to just bottom deck it. So um, it really didn't matter. And he just GG's right there. He just concedes. Um, not seeing any Reju's is rough. I think I literally typed that in chat. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I would have given up there like I mean he had a blocker you could see like it was looking it was looking uh, rough for him but I figured like okay and man okay I, I was so close to keeping this hand I literally I wanted to keep this hand so bad because I think if I drew into like a Robin or a Lilith within the first couple turns like this would have been amazing um, but then I get this this hand, which is decent. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, like again, we have like Lilith and Robin ready to go and Egghead Luffy. Um, I really like uh, Lilith or Robin into life turn one for against Red Purple Law. I think you need to put something into life turn one. Um, it's just too risky not to, to be honest. Seeing a Yamato there sucks, knowing that that's the card I was about to draw. So maybe Robin would have been better in this instance, but just because I had two Liliths, I wanted to just get that early search. Um, you know, the order of things is always hard to predict. Um, and then we get a third Lilith, which is just kind of like bonkers. So I'm like, okay, all right, there's another Yamato. So that's two down, which is bad, but um, not, you know, I'm not despairing yet because I have a Katakuri and a 10 cost Ace in hand which is always good. See what he does here, he plays an iron. I mean, we're just, we're seeing, uh, can, I'm pretty sure this was an actual uh, misplay here where I was gonna try and pop that and I, I play the Luffy again, maybe even. Or maybe this time, because I have three, I think I was, yeah, yeah, actually, okay. I'll give myself the benefit of the doubt and say that this this one was the bait, and I think I did a misplay on the other one. We played into four cost law, which sucks. Um, later in this game, I I had a, a turn or two where ten cost ace would have been really really nice, um, but we do bait out the raise max there. I will say though, if I only had one Rocket Luffy there, I would not have played him. I, I know I would not have done that. Um, I would have saved him for like this turn. Um, so we're considering doing the Katakuri move here. But just having these Rocket Luffys is so nice. So I think what we're gonna do here is pop some stuff and hope we draw into a Yamato. I'm thinking about it. Do I end up just Katakuri? Yeah, I think I go for the Luffy play. It's just too powerful not to. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I don't hate that. I don't hate it at all because we already have three Liliths on board. Like, we have the please save. We have the one cost event to get a Luffy back or a Shaka later on, whichever one's more important at the time. Let's 
them using a 2k counter there is awesome for us sure get rid of a little no raise again so we're kind of in the clear um but like even if they had one razor here it's not the end of the world um it's really not that bad yeah i'm thinking about what to get i think i play atlas here i'm not really sure i don't hate the atlas play leaving me at two life just because oh um i think i'm gonna go for the the five cost luffy okay that's fine just being careful But they play Sanji instead. Double Sanji, that's right, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Where is my Yamato? Where is my Yamato? Um, this, I believe this is the turn where I was like, man, I wish I could just play 10 cost ace and just pass turn. Obviously, Yamato's better. And you can see I played at Edison there. So you, you're seeing some, some real-time misplays here. I thought I was at two or less life. I didn't double check. Edison is two or less. Luffy is two or less. The thing is, the egghead stage is three or less. And sometimes I just mix them up and I really shouldn't. Something you gotta look out for, like, I, I practice Vegapunk a lot and I still make these mistakes. Um, honestly, more in, more in these two games than I normally do, I'm uh, happy to admit. But uh, yeah, I'm not ashamed to admit I can't count sometimes. <laughs> Luckily enough, I'm making smart enough plays with my other decisions, and they're just not high rolling. But I mean, see, they're seeing a shit ton of blockers, though. And like, they had the they had the rush in the first game to go for game. We just had our blockers, and made the right decision by playing shock on field and having the one in in life. Because if we hadn't done that, I think we would have lost. Because I believe we only had up to 10k counter for a leader. So he's thinking about what to do. We see the one Dawn tap there. We know a raise max is coming down. Atlas is gone. Kind of sucks. And there's the rush. But we're at four life. This is also why it's okay to heal against Red Purple Law because you're kind of just preventing him from getting the um, the 7k rush off of Kid and Killer. So honestly, like things are not looking very good for us here. Uh, he's got a huge board. Yes, we have healthy life, but I'm just dying for Yamato. And boom, wouldn't you know it, we get it. This is why Flampe is so goaded and why I would honestly consider running her at four is like you get into these situations where like your opponent's like, fine, you want to stay at 3 or 4 life? That's fine for me. Like, I will just build 5 menacing bodies and, like, KO you. Or just, like, go for lethal or just get you down to 0, like, the next turn. So here I'm like, okay, I need to start going for life. Uh, I know he's going to take it because he needs the resources. And uh, hopefully can... Like, I, I, I saw two, right? I saw two Yamatas go to the bottom. This is my third. Um, I'm not really expecting another one to come, so I'm just kind of trying to make the most of everything right here. I mean, he's just got it right. He's got another one. So as for much as much as he's not like high rolling, he's still seeing a lot of really important cards for this matchup. Bottom decking Shaka is like one of the 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 most like painful things you can do against Vegapunk. Because as you'll see here, like I'm not able to get that blocker back into my onto my field from from trash. But the next best thing is normally Egghead Luffy. So we see him do this, and the one good thing about me not having top end is I have a ton of counter. And boom, I hit another um, Robin. It's like okay, we got a Kata Curry. And um, at this point, I'm like okay, I I want him to swing. Like, I'm kind of trying to bait it out at this point, too. Like, obviously, we could have countered out of that, but I didn't want to. So, the other thing, too, though, is, like, he should have been able to read a little bit better um, that I didn't have as much top end. But I don't blame him because I did... I mean, he saw me do the flampe into Yamato, but that doesn't necessarily, like give away that I didn't have any top end in my hand 
but us taking the life and just like i wouldn't expect vegapunk to have this much counter normally anyways and yeah he realizes like he's probably gonna just lose the next turn so he quits there um yeah that was two two wins i'm looking i was looking for my my yamatos and stuff um yeah hit him with hit him with the ggs and then the the xd um you can see he's running a's too which actually not a bad card in this matchup i think you have enough uh time to play it so okay what did we learn i misplayed multiple times um like i said for as many times as you think you're not going to forget there are going to be times when you just don't do the last double check of how much life do you have um i will say uh, i've normally i make these mistakes more on the sim in real life i'm normally a little bit more careful with just everything not just vegapunk um but yeah you're gonna make mistakes the best thing to do is like um try and make the most of them there are times like i do believe because i had three of the rocket luffy's i did play that one just like bait like if you want to waste a cost reduction card on it fine if not i'm gonna pop on your four costs next turn um because i have two other ones that i i know i can use immediately because i know you're gonna swing at least once um in the next turn or two i'll go down to two and i can use them the other thing is like um re-watching it here too um which is nice because i feel like i'm learning by re-watching this footage back is uh maybe would have put the robin into life instead of lilith just because um the more cards you're aware of in your hand like the more cards you have in your hand the easier of a choice it is to make off of your search right which is why normally like if you play a kuzan and a brand new off of moria you always 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 get the one draw from kuzan because then you have more information of what you would like to get off the brand new search um i think that applies here too so if there's one thing i've gleaned from this it's like if you do have multiple lilis and a robin it's probably always better to just um, unless you really have a strong reason you need to get that Lilith on the board, I do think it's a little bit stronger to play the Robin. So that's something new and interesting that I learned. Um, like a little niche thing like that I wouldn't probably normally think of. Um, I probably could have like sequenced some of my, my plays a little bit better. Uh, and if I was baiting certain things out, probably could have done that a little bit better as well. But overall, I think we, we didn't like uh, freak out. We played it pretty conservative. We, we took our time and... Uh, like we just beat red purple law twice like the guy didn't high roll I know he didn't see a lot of rages, but I'm telling you even if he sees one or two It's still a very winnable matchup as long as they don't high roll like crazy Because they saw a ton of blockers and they saw a ton of like cost removal stuff um, But yeah, obvious and they saw enough kid and killers, right? So the real thing though that I feel like hurts Vegapunk is like Obviously, Kid and Killer and Reiju, but also just a ton of blockers. Because if we don't have the enough, if we run out of KO cards or we don't draw our Yamatos, it's really, really rough. And then they end up just being able to swing in with them as well. Um, if you're a Red Purple Law player and you're playing against Vegapunk, I uh, don't think you have to swing on the first turn, like turn two. But I would advise like pressuring them a bit because if you play it too slowly and they do have their Yamatos and they do have their KO cards, like if you see them not being able to establish Gidatsu's or Egghead Luffy's or an 08 or Egghead Nami, um, I think that's kind of your your go ahead to kind of start pressuring them a little bit because that probably means they have a lot of uh, top end cards that they're not gonna be able to play until later. And if your um, Vegapunk opponent has like the ability to hold off and survive until they're nine, 10 on turns and then play multiple Yamatos back to back, you're probably gonna lose as Red Purple Law. So just be careful. Um, if you have the rush and the means to do it, it's normally better to aggro them down. But the overall best thing against Vegapunk is to do kind of like what he was doing here and like build a really wide board and then just start going in for five, six, sevens. Um, and, you know, as long as they haven't hit a bunch of Robins or if we don't have a bunch of resources in our hand, that's normally how you're going to win. So there's a few approaches you can take and it really just depends on like reading the board state and adjusting accordingly. But I do feel like Red Purple Law just has so much power with like it's uh, building the board while aggroing you down that it's better to take advantage of that. And I would probably say more often than not, you should pressure down the Vegapunk opponent. Um, 
And if you're Vegapunk, be aware that some people, some players are Giga Chads and they're just gonna be like, you know what, F it, dude. I don't care what triggers you get out of life. I'm gonna deal with them as they come. I'm just gonna rush you down. And if you don't have the composure to deal with that, you're gonna lose. So um, like, you know, on the other side, be aware of that. But GG's to this guy that I think that was a decent like two games um, and kind of showcase like how you can take advantage and control the, the game against Red Purple Law. Okay, next we got Black, Yellow, Luffy. Let's go ahead and watch it. Uh, he took second in this matchup. You definitely want to take second. I think it doesn't really matter what leader you are. I think you want to take second away from Black Yellow Luffy. Um, but you can see we have the, the Katakuri. So I decided to keep. Uh, this is decent. We had Lilith, uh, Robin, Shaka, and Katakuri. I'm not going to lie. That's that's pretty ideal. Like I don't, I don't know if I could really ask for better. Um, they double flampe, which makes me hesitate for a second and think like mmm like should I just um like maybe try and switch to an aggro approach here um so I'm thinking about that right here and we get the double shaka I choose shaka over luffy because luffy's not really going to do much for us um it is actually nice to be able to KO a garp um just get rid of that threat but at the end of the day, when we get our, our top end on the board, we really want one or two Shaka to be able to protect them. So seeing, dude, I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I think we might just lose this because he's double flampeed into double garped. And then, oh, watch this. Okay, this is insane. I think I've only ever seen this one time. This dude, he didn't know that was you look look at me looking through the log just to be like wait did he play hiori or something like i am so confused this dude literally just played sabo and and just went for it i was like what and that was the only other thing i was like maybe i should have gotten a egghead luffy and then i i drew into him off of robin i was like did you just guess that like did you just guess that he was gonna be there and he said i just wanted the life out and i was like what that's so insane um and, and just on top of that i was like great because i was gonna at least like gadatsu or or something like i was maybe thinking about gadatsu and the garp and like just getting another body on board and i can't even do that so i'm like okay um this is kind of a tricky spot to be in i don't really know what to do uh like it's maybe a little too early to just play shaka so i'm like screw it i'll just put robin in like it's honestly i'm i'm feeling kind of hopeless at this point not hopeless but i'm like like uh i think we're at a disadvantage here so um like that's just they've gotten so much resource and so much draw off of those four the two garps the two flampes that i'm a little worried but i know that as soon as he plays that five cost luffy i have caught a curry for him and then you see here like okay he does it again so this guy is kind of wild but I understand he's just like trying to, I guess he doesn't have any other Hiori's or Flampe's and um, like he's just trying, I don't I don't know why he did that second one. I, I really don't. Um, I guess he just doesn't mind getting the, the little kids in trash for Moria later. Cause if he's not expecting me to, um, whatchamacallit, like attack into him, then uh, he needs some way of like, getting multiple of them like obviously yes you get a discard from leader effect but he might be like kind of just trying to set up early but so i see this as a chance to like okay i'm definitely going to ko that ace then um we draw draw a second raigo which in this matchup i don't think is very important um and then i decide like i'm just gonna play out this shaka and like preparation for playing katakuri the next turn um and just start setting up but again like um I'm getting a little worried <laughs> and then he gets the Makino he has the Makino so now it's like okay um, we might be screwed here because he's at eight on this turn right yeah so we know if he has Moria he's set up to go next turn and he's got another Sabo the one thing that really kills this matchup is if they get like three to four Sabos um, and are able to cycle them properly and replay them because um, well obviously I mean against most matchups it's five cost Luffy and and blocker Sabo 
but uh the other thing too is he thunderbolted there i was like god this dude's just he's running the he's running the tech he's running things like i didn't i wasn't uh really expecting that so that's why i played shaka onto um the board and i got another raigo so I was like, okay we're getting rid of those but i have yamato at this point which is nice but yamato doesn't really do much for you as far as like KOing things so i'm like um sabo's out of the question i can't ko anything except for garp or uh, flampe so um I really want him I really want him to get that Luffy onto the board so I can put it into his life. Um, but I figure um, we have two Katakuris, so I'll just do this. And I have nine Dawn, so Katakuri plus leader effect is good. Sabo's on the board to um, stop us from, you know, going for lethal. It's not really the KO prevention that really hurts us it's the uh it's just them having leader or uh, blockers on board so i think he did that hiori on purpose because he didn't have a kid sabo but sending that sabo to the bottom i feel like probably hurt him and he trashes another luffy for leader effect Um, but again, it's just like, and I, I guess you could say this dude's making misplays from the early game by doing that wild thing. I think he, this is the thing too. I think he just sees Vegapunk and he's like, okay, I can just do whatever I want. I'll like try and go down to zero life as quickly as possible. Um, and this is where I'm like, damn, I regret not being able to KO that garb earlier. <laughs> Cause I really don't want to give him counter for this, but I have to. And we're going to take this for Shaka. So now we can swing with Katakuri and we can, we know we can defend it. Um, so this is this is really strong. Uh, when we know we can play and swing with the Katakuri, because what we want to do here, and I'm thinking about saving two two Dawn for the event, but I know that like uh, if I he's seven K right now, so if I swing nine, it's gonna be so much harder for him to deal with. So I gave it a Garp because he made me waste a two K counter, and then like you know he's got two Luffy's so. I'm thinking like, you know, he's probably not going to want to defend this. He's probably going to let one of them go. And just getting that to the bottom of the deck is going to be strong. And yep, he takes it. Not like a crazy victory for us or anything, but um, we know that we at least have one less five cost Luffy to worry about unless he gets around back around to it from his deck. I'm checking his trash because I know this is the Moria turn. seeing what he's gonna do like i would say this probably isn't the best play ever from black yellow luffy but he's not making any like crazy mistakes right um and we're seeing we're seeing what we want to see in this matchup which is shaka and katakuri and then if we're lucky we get a yamato which is everything we've gotten so here comes moria um i think he probably underestimated just being able to get rid of resources early on is what I would chalk it up to. But now he's got most of the things he needs. Just lucky for us, he's going down to four cards here and has to get rid of another one. So I know he's gonna get three cards for uh, to use leader effect this turn, which is kind of nice. Like as long as Luffy is below four cards, as long as they have three cards in hand, it just makes math for lethal and setting up so much easier. But he has another freaking Luffy too, which is kind of crazy. So we're like, okay, what is he gonna put in life? Ace and Sabo, and he hasn't been able to utilize Ace, uh, which is really nice. He didn't, he didn't respect the um, the Egghead Luffy coming down and KOing his two drop, or I don't know if he was doing that for bait, but um, I have block there because I I have the one cost event. Um, could have countered could have countered but at this point i know uh i'm kind of just setting up for going for game so i'm thinking okay no ko here but oh well we'll just put a robin get the two extra cards and to, i mean honestly i'm just thinking i kind of have to just try and go for lethal if he gets the um multiple blockers on the board it's going to be rough and that's why i was saying like sometimes sabo hurts us more than luffy and um it's just it's just why it's so good against decks like like black decks and ko reliant decks right because once you get that ko protection 
Like I could always Raigo a Sabo and go for game. But if he just played the Sabo, I can't. But we see him trash that Sabo with the Luffy effect, which is huge. Really huge for us. Um, and it looks like he's gonna try and pressure us down. So again, like him not having the kid Sabo, that's come back to bite him twice. I mean, this would have been like the third time. So the second time he didn't have the kid, so um, that probably would have happened either way. But he could have had the second Sabo potentially. And he plays a Kuzan, 10 cost Kuzan here. I'm not expecting that either at all. But I freak out for a second and I'm like, wait, but it's, it's fine. He only has one blocker, he has four cards. Like pretty sure I can math this out. Um, and I'm like, I have the Raigo too. So this is always an option. And why Raigo is so strong is because I'm like, I have, you know, I think I have enough. I'm gonna have four Dawn open. Um, him being able to just choose when to block, I think is less valuable than us just being able to, he's only a 5K leader. Like if he was a seven or a 9K leader, I don't think I would have done that. I would have maybe tried to clear board. Um, but and then when we see him when we see him ditch that i'm like okay i got this just go seven get rid of the one like i know i got game at that point and then that's ggs um so uh a couple things definitely to mention like we saw a lot of the cards we needed they made a few misplays they did a few weird things obviously i don't think this was the best black yellow luffy player in the world but they played decently well and i think this just shows you like what you can do to win the matchup um like fortunately for us like even if they had gotten another um like one or two cycles off the sabo like you saw they had their kid sabo coming next but um like if they had just played with no misplays and played perfectly which again like you know people don't really know how to play against vegapunk so um part of his strength is just knowing that like your opponent more than ever is prone to doing something wrong and doing a misplay um because maybe this person knows Black Yellow Luffy really well, but they just kind of like freaked out at seeing Vegapunk and started making the wrong choices. Um, so that's not something you should really count on, but something that's really nice, <laughs> like a nice side effect of playing a minor off meta leader like that. Leader like that. But um, yeah, we, we had the Katakuris. I think you can see like you're just putting their five cost Luffy's and Sabo's into life. And then a, the, 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 the real strength in katakuri putting those characters back into life is if you have um already either a katakuri or yamato or an ace established on board um or just you know if you have the ability to swing at the, if they're like even if they're just a 5k leader swinging in with a, a couple of 5ks or 6ks to try and get them to send that card that you just put into life to the bottom of the deck that's when it really hurts luffy and not giving them the resources and flexibility of being able to set up whatever they want with their trash for a leader effect is probably the strongest thing similar to like when somebody bottom decks our shaka and we can't get it back with the one cost event it's kind of the same thing um i would prioritize katakuri in this matchup over yamato but yamato is obviously still really nice to have um because you're getting the heal and because katakuri more often than not you're using it to put something of your opponents at the bottom or top of their life more than you're actually wanting to heal yourself um just in most situations to be honest so yamato's there for our own heal um but yeah you can you can play it um at a pretty you know like slow pace building up trying to deal with their board the best you can um i do think there's probably a way you can try and kind of like aggro them down um, but if they start taking their life, um, like, like if they start taking their life really aggressively and you, you get a trigger out or two out of life and you have three, four characters on board, sure. Maybe go for it. Like, uh, I, this is definitely a matchup I need to explore more. I have played it, um, a bit, but I haven't tried out every possibility. Normally this is the approach that I take when I play him or play against him. But yeah, GG to this guy. I hope that helps and gives you some insight to, uh, what to do for the black yellow Luffy matchup. All right, so next we got a uh, Moria match here. Luckily, I get to choose. I'm going to go second. I think just stealing their uh, on curve Moria is really important against Black, especially just OP07. When you're going against Luchi and OP08, um, you can think about taking first, but still personally just like second. Going against Black, just not giving them that opportunity. 
to kind of get some combo wombos going. So we see their trash from Sindri, not too bad. Um, Devil Isho probably wasn't going to be, like Isho probably wasn't going to be a card they were going to prioritize playing anyways. So, um, but we're seeing leader effect here. I'm thinking like, okay, please don't have a Prona hand. <laughs> they do. <laughs> They trash it because this is this is really what hurts us is just a bunch of Peronas. Um, we'll get the Edison down, cycling two cards. Unfortunately, I don't want to get rid of those, but I kind of have to, so I do. We get another Robin, which I'm like, okay, um, not the worst thing. And here I'm thinking, okay, he's gonna like if he has multiple Peronas, that's really bad. I'm gonna start pressuring him down because the best he can do is um, like. He can KO Edison, right? But the the like the best he can do to get rid of Atlas is waste like an Ice Age and then use leader effect with Absalom. And if he does that on an Atlas, like we're totally okay with that, right? We're we're not we're not too worried if that's the amount of resources he has to use to just get rid of a, a five cost six K. <clears throat> so he goes for the Edison, which I'm like, okay, that's fine. And I'm like, okay, what are you gonna play? couldn't see and it's the Absalom which is odd I'm like okay he didn't get to KO anything with that um not I'm actually not really sure why he did that you can see I'm kind of like confused <laughs> too but uh it is what it is and I'm thinking like okay I think I'm gonna get out to here what do I KO um I think I check his trash one more time I should yes no check the trip oh I should have double checked But I don't want, I know I don't want him to have the Absalom. So, um, cause I did just see that he didn't have any other Absaloms in trash. I mean, I understand him just wanting to play a body on board, but I think in that case, I still would have just gone for the hog back, right? Cause I think he had two. So leave Absalom for like the, the KO turn and just get a hog back. It's the same stat line, right? Uh, don't know if that was a misclick or if he had a, a bigger plan, a grander scheme that he was playing at. see what he does here I believe he's on his seven dawn turn and at this point the aggro approach is working for us um we are at equal dawn here so this is where atlas uh isn't as good anymore and the skill check really comes into play did he have another absalom i don't think he did i'm not really sure okay and he gets uh rebecca plays rebecca gets perona back yeah, he definitely should have played that hogback. Sorry, I keep harping on that. I do remember thinking that was strange when he did that originally as well. Okay, we're going into Atlas. Or, uh, sorry, Lilith. I obviously can't save this. I'm not going to. I'm trying to see what he does. I think he plays hogback here now, too. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, which I'm like, okay. So now, this is looking a little bit more dangerous. Sends two cards back, and he gets Perona. So Perona's back. <laughs> so neither of us are really like, you know, doing anything too crazy. Neither of us are really high rolling crazy or like seeing amazing plays happening. Um, I'm, I'm fully expecting him to have Moria next turn though. I'm trying to decide what to do here, because I'm at eight Dawn. Which is always an awkward turn. Like you want the even curve with Vegapunk, but if you don't have seven cost mom, even if you do have seven cost mom, like a lot of the times, um, playing her and just healing one, you're a lot of times you're better off like doing like a Lilith plus another card plus leader effect. But um, the eight dawn turn can be a little awkward. But in this in this case, we had the two life, so I figure okay, I'm gonna swing Atlas. It's, we know we get an immediate new uh, another body back onto the board that's not rested. Um, it was worth it. A little risky, but since we have the Robin as our second to last life, I know I'm drawing two cards. And if they did for some reason just like go ham and just try and really just go for game somehow this turn, I know I'm probably okay just like statistically because we have the Shaka as well. The nice thing about Moria here is 
there's pros and cons. Moria, the cons, like the, the the thing that makes it harder for Vegapunk is they can go wide quickly. They can get those bodies on the board while swinging big with leader, uh, which is something Luchi doesn't do as well. Um, him playing Saba here actually really sucks because I was hoping to get a nice KO with the uh, Yamato the next turn. Um, so I might even pivot. I think I play 10 ace, I'm not really even sure. But uh, yeah, Moria can go wide and they still have the advantages of playing a cost Moria and stuff like that. So it's really strong. And um, whereas Luchi can just KO everything, right? Um, Moria has to spend a little bit more resources and doesn't get those like immediate KOs. And you can see I'm also, like I said before in some of the other matches, like I'm playing as quickly as I can. Like if you look at the timers, I've played three minutes faster than my opponent because one of the problems is your opponents probably have not played a lot of Vegapunks in their time. And um, if you're both playing slowly, you're going to time. You're just going to time. But if only one of you is playing slowly, you're probably going to be okay. But still, like, in the past couple of weeks of just my OPO8 testing, more often than not, um, it's because my opponent is playing slowly that we ever go to time or get close to time. And it's not... Um, and I'm not saying that I'm just, like... A better player it's just like I, I i have to know my plays i have to play quickly otherwise i know it's going to time um obviously you can take your time if it's a really important turn or if you're really not sure what to do but the best thing to do especially if your opponent is taking a little bit longer time is to just start like mapping out what your turn is going to be um, so we see him blockering up like crazy and playing this brand new um, getting his Absalom back into trash, which is actually really good for him. Um, I'm a little bit worried, like, okay, I don't know what to do here. But, like, we're pretty good at three life. I have, um, you know, I have a Yamato in the back here. And I'm thinking, okay, I want to get rid of this Sabo while I can. So we're going to put Robin into life, which is really good. And then KO it. And then I'm like, F it, man. We'll just swing in. Because it's like, yes, you have two Borsas, but you only have four cards. Um, I think I know one of them is Perona still, which is there. But, uh, like, there's no way you're getting rid of, like, my Katakuri and my Ace. Um, I have Shaka on board. If I didn't have Shaka, it would be a little bit more scary. But I'm feeling really confident here. So he's down to zero. Um, like, even Amoria doesn't really do much here, right? Because you can play blockers, but you're not going to be able to reboard, uh, rebuild your board enough. Yeah, and so he just, he just disconnects. Um... And I was trying to see, like, what he could have played off of Moria. He has the Rebecca. But, I mean, at that point, we have Katakuri, Yamato, and Ace. So, yeah, he had the Moria. Um, he drew into it late. So, again, like, a little bit fortunate for us. Um, we saw more of the cards that we needed. I think he made a few questionable plays early on. But, again, like... The main reason for these games and why I picked these ones in particular is because I wanted to showcase like um, like if everything goes right, like what the ideal situations are for you to be able to beat your opponent um, when you're playing Vegapunk. And uh, yeah, like even if they had drawn Amoria, like we would have been fine. Like if they had played Amoria on their uh, nine dawn turn, I think we still would have been fine. Um, Moria just struggles be like moria can normally ko maybe like one large body but it struggles KOing multiple bodies especially like in succession like turn after turn so as long as we're able to build our board like we did like even if they're playing three to four blockers like you saw like it doesn't matter to us because we're KOing whatever we can while establishing built big bodies and then just you know and this is a really good example of 10 cost ace like being super strong because as you saw like the turn that i played him it took me like 10 seconds to decide like okay i'm just doing this and i'm playing ace i'm like swinging with whatever like atlas or whatever i'm playing ace and that's boom done all right good i'm back to like three or four life whatever it was um so that's another like that's a good example of showing how he can be really strong um but yeah taking second i think is really important against moria um just throwing them off the curve like if he had moria and he had if he had second and he had moria on curve this would have been a totally different game but i think we saw enough cards i think we played it well enough to where um even if he had played or drawn better i still think we would have ended up winning this one so that's uh really nice to uh, kind of see here watching it back but ggs to this guy that was a good one that's like an ideal situation if you go against like moria or just black kind of in general i i do think the um brushing them down here was the smart play 
Um, if you have the Atlas and like the Robin and the Lilith to just kind of get the resources coming in while you're pressuring them down, I do think it's kind of the right call. Because if we had let them set up more and if we didn't force them to kind of play those blockers, I think they would have been able to just like play out those, those Sakazukis or, you know, like do other plays or just keep pressuring us down with those Peronas and all that. But um, yeah, um, that's it for that one. So GG's. All right, we have Hancock boa boa hancock herself um i like taking second against dofi and hancock so them getting to take second away from us hurts a little bit but this is a pretty strong hand we know we can use thunderbird to ko um like a jinbei or whatever they play off of jinbei and just having lilith is always good i didn't have a great card to like having robin or Atlas, or even Egghead Luffy in this case would have been so much better than Shaka. But I felt like just playing him early, just so that we have something on board, and knowing that we can like Lilith here, um, and then try and draw into what we want to play next is okay. I still think it's a little bit of a, of a weak two turns, but you know, at least this way we're saying like, hey, swing into my life, because I know I have the Robin for the next turn. Um, we're gonna be at five, so I can, um, that's really strong too, getting that. And then we have the Egghead Luffy, like you, zero hesitation. I'm just like, boom, give me that Rocket Luffy, baby. Uh, two two Rigos here is is whatever. Um, I'm actually debating, because this, this is such a strong event card to have for their four cost, but they, have, they didn't play the Jinbei on curve. So I'm like, kind of just being like, okay, I'm gonna be a little greedy. I'm gonna get rid of this. I have the Luffy and the Gidatsu, so I kind of have the space. Um, one thing I will say, and then they play the six cost Hancock, which I think is just amazing for us because like, oh, okay, that's beautiful. Because every turn that you don't do anything and you just pass to Vegapunk, he's just one turn closer to um, having his top end and being able to do that. Like he's one, he's one turn closer to, to Yamatoing whatever your um, card is. And yeah, they have the gravity blade here, so it's okay. Um, it's just, it is what it is. That's why I didn't love playing Shaka because I'm like, I know he's going to get gravity bladed. Um, but again, it's just, sometimes it's about having the numbers on the board and baiting it out. Um, uh, going back to the Rigos though, I think keeping one Rigo for, uh, especially Boa. Dofi is like up to your discretion, um, at least in OPO8, because not a lot of people run the top end or if they do, it's the one of 10 drop Kaido or maybe two, um, but some people do run the nine cost Sanji Mihawk and stuff like that. So you gotta be careful. I think keeping at least one is good. I, would, I wouldn't get rid of both of them just cause there are certain situations where having the Raigo when you need it against their 10 drop Kaido, etc., is gonna be literally the, the thing that turns the game. Uh, one, I forgot to mention this, this uh, person took quite a long time in between like thinking about their turns so i did make like little cuts in between um so it was slightly edited but not actually edited just like cut so that you don't have to see that um so it doesn't take as long and this is this is terrible for me um because here i'm i don't make the mistake of playing luffy when i can't use his effect but the downside is i can't use his effect when i really wanted to so playing that edison might not have been the smartest play but they were it, it's this matchup was hard because they were pressuring me down for a second and then they kind of backed off and it kind of made me make a mistake of um, putting that edison there when maybe when i shouldn't have i should have just played him out on the field because being able to pop his Moria or his uh, Weevil there would have been really strong and getting a draw. But you can see we kind of ended up um, being okay. And we had we had what was gonna be like a really strong turn. And then he puddings us, which I wasn't really expecting, but I guess we were at six or seven, so it's fair. Um, I don't think I could have, I mean, I think I could have played around it a little bit better. But at the end of the day, we got a decent hand from it and we drew into the Yamato. So it's like, never punish, baby. <laughs> um, you could probably say that was a bit of a misplay on our part. But here, uh, I don't want to swing into life yet, just yet. And I know that, and like, dude, it's situations like these. If you play, um, if you play the Starve game, I really, really think Atlas is just kind of invaluable because when they do finally end up swinging, 
you being at less life than them and just being able to swing like crazy over their characters um well just swing at their characters and know that like they have to bottom deck or like KO you with effects is really really strong um so we're just trying to get cards out of their hand which unfortunately for boa like they don't mind giving us cards most of the time because they're just we're just setting them up for leader effect but in this case i do think it was kind of strong um because like two of our characters we know they can't ko in battle katakuri is gonna be hard for them they just read rock yamato anyways so this is kind of bad for us that was probably the strongest play they could have made right there um getting rid of yamato and then playing a jinbei into a blocker is pretty strong Luckily, we do draw into another Katakuri here. And I think here's where I decide, like, okay, I think I need to just start pressuring them. Because we don't have the Yamato. If we had the Yamato, obviously, I'd play it a little bit differently. There's another thing, hard thing about uh, Vegapunk, where you just really aren't sure. Um, like I could have put I could have put my own atlas back in life there too, but I think just getting rid of his blocker I liked I liked the uh, swinging six seeing what he did and then getting rid of the one blocker to hopefully get rid of his other blocker here That was my my thinking um, And I'm trying to be careful as well like I'm debating uh, whether or not I'm gonna swing with this katakuri because I don't have a shaka on the field yet um, and I decide Screw it. We're just gonna go for it I think I play, um, yeah, Robin, into, uh, put Robin into my life. Yeah, that's right. And he plays Bounce Kaido. I'm like, dude, it's hard on the sim because this isn't very meta, you know? Like, it is kind of, I guess, for 07. I play a lot of, I'm, I'm in Japan, I'm playing 08, so it's hard for me to, like, switch back to the metas and remember exactly what cards to expect in every single deck. Um, I know people did play Bounce Kaido and OP07 Boa, so I guess I shouldn't have been too surprised, but I was like, okay. Uh, I have too much life, so Raigo's not a good option here. But I am thinking, you know what? If he wants to swing into me, I should be fine. I'll survive. So now that he has a threatening presence like Kaido on the board, I, I think I need to start swinging in a little bit more. I'm kind of weighing my options here. <clears throat> Swing with Katakuri first there. That's right, okay, I see. That's right, that's right. Um. I don't care about him getting that Hancock because I'm thinking I'm just gonna go eight nine nine, and then um, I'm thinking about it. I really am thinking about it here, but I'm like, if he, he's there's no world where he can't get out of a nine or ten k. So um, <laughs> this took so much restraint. Oh, look at me! Look at me wanting to go for lethal. That's so stupid. Um, I do this and I'm like, oh my god, I wanted to see every single card right there But it is what it is and I'm like, okay, I'm going to uh, Play a little here because I want to be able to go for lethal next turn Like I have the Rygo to like pop a blocker if he does play it um, And we put the Lilith or the Atlas on life because like, okay, we have two characters that are gonna be standing um, If he has something like a gravity blade here, he can essentially KO most of my characters. I think he can get rid of all of them. No, not all of them. Er, yeah, he probably could have. So that actually would have been scary. He ends up getting rid of most of them anyways. Um, but yeah, I guess he would have been uh, putting himself at risk without the blocker just in case one of them was left. I'm just trying to see like what how he could have done this differently. Um, not a weak turn or anything. I know he has the Hancock too, that's right. I, I like, so I was thinking, um, yeah, he'll probably just play the Hancock, but like, I don't know. I, I think 
Uh, maybe just trying to get rid of more of my board was the play. Good, but I am in a, like a little bit of a situation now where I'm like, mm, I don't know what I should do here. So I'm thinking I want to keep, I want to have at least three characters on board because that way I can like try and go for lethal the following turn. Um, I, I know I want to get Katakuri. I need Katakuri and two other active characters this is kind of like what I'm thinking, I believe at the moment. So I think I'm about to put Katakuri down and put one of my own characters back into life. Because at this point, it's like, uh, I, Rai goes out of reach because I have too much life. So I might as well just like set myself up to try and go for lethal the following turn. Yeah, I think I just put Lilith back. Yeah, and then I go, okay, I'm going to deploy Atlas. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, which is like almost too much. It's kind of overkill. I think you're about to see too. I have to like make certain decisions here. But it does force my opponent. It's like, hey, I have five life now. Like, what are you going to do about it? So we do that. That's what it was. I wanted to get the Lilith so I could get the uh, Egghead Luffy to pop his Dofi blocker. So now we have Raigo and Luffy. So even if he plays two blockers, we're good. Like, I can pop both of them for seven dawn and then um go in with all of my characters which is honestly not the like um he could still potentially counter out of that but i'm like okay i'm at least in like a decent enough position i'm thinking all right i want to bait him into just swinging as much as he can like i want him to even put three dawn on dofi and just go for game uh like maybe um uh, I think I'm even debating like, yeah, I think I take this life here. Yeah. I do think he, he got a little greedy here at the end and boom. I mean, I had the Luffy anyways. He saw me take the Luffy, so it didn't really matter. But I do, I think, yeah, Hold on, let's see. So he just quits um, the Insta Disconnect. Uh, he had the uh, Perfume for Mirror which um, could have been strong. Uh, he didn't have an additional blocker. So I think what he was, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay, so, um, hold on, let me just pull this back a second. So what he was gonna do here is, um, and I, I calculated for this, I remember now I calculated for this, uh, why I took this last life is, um, cause recently, the Dofies and the, the Hancocks have been getting me with the, the Perfume from Mirrors, if you're not careful. So if you're playing against Hancock or Dofi, always, always, always be care be careful of their Diable Jambe, which is Perfume from Mirror. It gives them plus 2k and unblockable. So what he was going to do is if I, he, he wanted me to, if I, if I was, um, if I didn't have enough counter here, I should have blocked. I always should have blocked. But what I wanted him to do was actually swing with this Dofi so I could go for game. So I remember I, I made sure to double check because what he would have been able to do is um, use the two Dawn for Perfume from Mirror and he would have gone to six and then he could have had the extra Dawn. He would have been seven unblockable. But I mean, you can see like we had plenty of counter. Like I even had the one up for the event. Like we were so fine. Um, he could have swung like what, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. He could have swung 11 unblockable and you still would have been fine. Um, technically we had another 1k counter here like if this was just a regular 1k counter but as soon as we got rid of that even just his last option obviously we had it the, the, the next turn so um, yeah like even with the 10 drop Kaido on the board us not being able to get rid of it because we have too much life with Raigo which is something you can prepare for and you can kind of keep that in mind and play to your outs of being like okay I'm gonna keep myself at two to three life or um, like one to two life just so that if I need to Raigo in like a, a um, tricky situation, like it's fine. But again, notice how I'm at 1041 and they're at eight, like not the craziest difference here, but like um, in most of these games, I end up like between two to four minutes ahead of my opponent just in play time. And uh, I think it's like what, 1730 or something is like the thing here. So that's seven and that's uh, nine. So like, like, you, you have to you have to just take into account for your opponent possibly playing slower than you and um yeah there's just so much to account for <laughs> with vegapunk it's really hard but uh yeah this is how i would approach boa and dofi 
it's kind of just most of the time you're doing the starve tactic and figuring out this is the tricky thing too is like it's similar like with Anel. With Anel, I think it's a little bit more straightforward because you always have so much healing that you can do with leader effect. But what you do is you you control and KO their board as much as you can, starving them and till you want to get your one or two Yamatos on board or your Yamato and Katakuri and one or two other characters. And then you have to just choose your timing carefully, but choose the timing and really go for it. Because when you start attacking into their life, you have to be fully committed and you have to have at least like your next two to three turns like somewhat planned out of how you think you're gonna build your own board. And then as your opponent deals with that and like attacks you and ch how things change, that's what you gotta deal with and try and continue and continue to like be able to survive and then finish with lethal. Um, yeah, that's the main thing to look out for. Other than that, like watch out for the gravity blades. Um, they're gonna have red rocks. So like for as much top end as you have like always try and have more or like what i kind of had to do this game was my yamato goes bye bye the next turn so i'm like put like spam like four small bodies on board so either you're wasting all of your resources with gravity blades um or things stick and i can just start pressuring you so yeah that's the main takeaway from there but ggs to this guy all right guys that's gonna do it for this video i hope it helped i think it ended up being pretty long a pretty in-depth one um with the gameplay and the commentary let me know if you like that style of the commentary over the videos that are pre-recorded or if you'd prefer me to kind of just be talking through things as i do them live i know it was fun for me to try that i learned a lot by doing that um just re-watching my own gameplay but uh yeah that's vegapunk uh he's really really awesome kind of underrated in my opinion um, it's a hard leader, man, because you have to commit a lot of time to practicing it. You have to know that a lot of your games are going to go to time or go close to time. And I understand why people might be kind of turned off by that and want to just play like Red Purple Law or something else instead. But man, like I said at the beginning, like it's such a rewarding leader and deck to play. So let me know if you're playing it. Let me know if you want to play it. Let me know if you have any other questions. I will definitely be making another guide for OP08 and um yeah shout out to all the people playing vegapunk out there because it's one of my favorite decks and i will definitely keep playing it through op08 and into op09 but that's it for this video uh thank you so much for watching if you made it all the way to here at the end thank you so much consider liking and subscribing all that jazz check out the discord check out the other videos on my youtube but um just for now thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace